Well, personally, I, I, I thought it was something for this, like, that would be good for the CV, and I love history anyway, so I thought it would relate to my, my study at school. But then after the um, orientation seminar, where we we had a, a speak with a, um, a Holocaust survivor, kind of like, why I was doing it kind of changed. Like, I was in, I was intrigued, but I, I did not know what to expect at all. Like, I had a preconceived image of what I thought it would be like from films and from documentaries and stuff, but, like, it was, it, I really wanted to find out what it was actually going to be like. Yeah, because I don't think you really gauge what it is from textbooks. I mean, we've studied, studied Nazi Germany for several years now, and I think it all gets a bit similar in a way, and mm. to have that personal dimension and actually go and see what happened. And one of the, one of the main goals of the project is um, to consider all those affected by the Holocaust as individuals, as opposed to just as like part of the statistics you read about in your history book. So that was like, that was what I learned, especially with the testimony of the Holocaust survivor at the first seminar. We started in a, a Jewish cemetery in Osvietchen, which is the town that was renamed Auschwitz. Um, and um, yeah, that was there, that was there before the, the Second World War but it had been changed during the war. The, a lot of the gravestones had been removed and then used as paving stones, but they've tried to reassemble it as best as they possibly can, but it was quite run down, actually. It wasn't really well well maintained. And I think that allowed us to like gauge a sense of what life was like before the war, so that really did make the people people as yeah. opposed to just statistics. Because over half the population of the town were Jews before the war. Well, that's probably why it was a convenient place to build the concentration camp, but... Um, there's no Jews there now, so no, the last Jewish last person died. Yeah. Like what? Another thing that surprised me was that Auschwitz one. Like it's really well designed. Like when you go through the um, Arbeit Macht Frei sign, um, you just see all these buildings, and they they actually look quite nice. And obviously, it's ironic when you go inside because each of the um, each of the blocks is now filled with like all the the evidence of the Holocaust. So there's they had all the Zyklon B gas canisters, and they had. Um, the shoes of the people that's that got to me because I think when you see um certain things like the uniforms and stuff that is part of the like the dehumanizing process but when you see like their shoes that they arrived in like they kind of characterize the people so that that was quite moving and then the worst thing I saw I think was there was a, they had a doll with whose face had been smashed and I think the children really that were part of the process really affected me because they didn't know what was going on and their lives were so short really in terms of yeah all their personal possessions in the um Auschwitz one kind of like highlight the futility of like they, they had no idea they had no idea that they were going to come and have all this taken away from them they didn't realize that um they were coming there solely to die in, especially in Birkenau yeah I think Birkenau was much more up to the individual so the fact to assess what had gone on because there was nothing there really whereas Auschwitz one was more of a museum Birkenau was literally a piece of land and I think you had to use what you knew, what you'd learn and just really try and understand how the people would have felt there. I think it's important to recognise that there were people there from every background so to get the overall experience that we had that was definitely necessary and I think that the, the things that you saw and you learn of definitely could in the future unfortunately occur again I think it's important that people recognise, people speak about it and people, yeah, just inform other people of what happened and what can go wrong. Yeah, one of the guiding questions um, that they, they keep like reminding you of is when is a, a bystander a perpetrator? Because um, it's, like, it's quite a fine line. And we were talking about would the Holocaust have been as bad if people had, um, if people had um, let it go or if people had intervened or if people had tried to stand, st um, speak up against the regime and everything so it's quite an interesting thought like for me personally like you do hear a lot of like throw away like racist comments like everywhere in society and you, it, you sometimes just let them go but it's actually it's just not that funny like it's it really shouldn't happen.